96.7 KCAL rocks. It is Patrick in the morning, and it is a Thursday. Time to talk some sports with our guy, Pep. Pep, what's going on? Yo, Patrick, we got to get all caught up, man. We're going to talk about the NBA playoff picture in just a moment. But we start with some college basketball because we just crowned a couple national champions. Shout out to UConn going back to back on the men's side. And then on the women's side, of course, everyone was talking about it. In fact, it got more television viewers than, than the men's game. It was it was South Carolina completing the undefeated perfect season, beating Caitlin Clark in Iowa in the national championship game. So congratulations to South Carolina and UConn, your college basketball champions. Back to back. I mean, let's never underestimate how difficult that is. And to happen on both sides of it, pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Exactly. In South Carolina, it was kind of like a rebuild uh, for them. They had a bunch of new players come in and they still got it all done. And I know a lot of people were cheering for Caitlin Clark. Obviously, she has a huge following now. The uh, The television ratings prove it because they outdrew the men's game. And then on the men's side, Patrick, I don't know if you're like me because we're about the same age. When I think of those those blue bloods, man, those old school college basketball dynasties, I think of of course, Carolina and, and Duke and Kansas, Kentucky. I might even throw UCLA in there. UConn is not near the top of my list, but listen, we got to put some respect on the Huskies. They are one of the college basketball all-time greats. You've got to put them up there with North Carolina and Duke and those other schools. They really are. We don't remember them winning championships and all that stuff when Jim Calhoun was doing his thing. Of course, you know, you know they had many a good players, yeah. but I, one thing that I definitely want to say, kids out there, is a huge reason that UConn is good is they play defense, which is out of style nowadays. They're old school and that they play defense. Kind of both teams do that, which I love. Yeah, you know, there are still some college basketball coaches out there that say, if you want to, uh, to the players, if you want to see the floor, if you want to get minutes, then you have to get after it on the defensive end. If you're not going to play defense, you're not going to play here. And I think UConn's one of those programs like, hey, we want the best guys, the best high school kids in the country to come play for us, but you've got to play on D. Got to play D, man. Yeah. And look at them back to back. Congrats. Yeah, congrats. So college basketball's all wrapped up. The NBA, man, we are just getting ready for the playoffs. Most teams only have two games left in the regular season. Some have three, but most have two, including the Lakers and the Clippers. For the Clippers, Patrick, for the first time in 10 years, the Clippers are your Pacific Division champions. They wrapped it up. Looks like they'll be the number four seed. They might fall to five, but regardless, they will play the Dallas Mavericks in the first round. We already know that. Wow, isn't that something, man? A little changing of the guard a little bit, of course. So we'll see what happens. Can they do it in the playoffs? Here we go. Dude, and that's I mean, that's a tough draw because Dallas is actually really good. So to see the Mavericks in the first round, maybe it seems a little unfair to the Clippers, but that's a, that's a tough first round draw. But, you know, eventually you got to go through all those teams. If you're going to make it to the NBA Finals, you're going to have to go through some through several good teams. So for uh, the Clippers in Dallas, they're four and five. Whether, you know, the Clippers are four or five, they're going to figure that out in the last two games. But um, yeah, the Clippers are locked in. They won the division. They rested all their guys last night in a loss to the Suns because it was basically irrelevant to them whether they won or lost. So they're resting up, man. They know exactly where they're going to be, exactly what they need to do now going to the playoffs. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting and very uh, Pac-12 football for them to do very good in their last year in the Staples Center? Yeah, right? <laughs> On their way out, man. Maybe bring in some new fans, some uh, new uh, season ticket holders, right, to sell out that yeah. new arena that they're going to in Inglewood. Yeah. Uh, what was funny, though, because the Clippers sat all their starters. I mean, Kawhi Leonard missed his sixth game in a row. Paul George didn't play. The start, James Harden, none of them played. And they lost to the Phoenix Suns. But because the Suns won that game... The Lakers and the Warriors got locked into that play-in tournament. There was a slight chance that the Lakers might be able to fight out and climb up into the top six. But because Phoenix won against the Clippers last night, the Lakers are locked into the play-in tournament. And it sure looks like the Lakers will play Golden State in that play-in tournament game. Wow. No, I mean, they just lost to the Warriors. So there's yes. kind of that. Uh, it's actually quite an interesting matchup, isn't it? It is. And here's the here's the thing, too, in that play-in tournament, not to nerd out too hard on this, but there's the 7, 8, 9, 10 seeds that go into this play-in tournament. The 9 and the 10, the winner advances to the next round, but the loser's automatically out. So, like, in that play-in game, the, the loser's done. 
But in the 7-8 game, the, the winner automatically goes to the first round and the loser still has another chance to make it to the first round. So if the Lakers end up as a 9 or a 10, their season could be done with one loss. That's it. One game and you are done. Yeah, and boy, you can almost feel it coming on a little bit. I mean, I don't want to say it, but that is looming, I feel like, that. Yeah, if they that nine ten game, it, it's 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 the little dicey because your season rides all on that one game. If you finish, if you play in the seven or eight game, at least you feel like okay. If we lose, we still have a chance to win one and get into that actual first round. But if you're a nine or ten seed, the whole season rides on that one game, and that could be the Lakers versus the Warriors. It sure looks like it right now with with two games left to go in the regular season. Yikes is right. Uh -huh. uh, in the Western Conference as a whole, uh, when you look at the top, it looks like Denver will probably be number one. They're trying to uh, keep one game up on Oklahoma City and Minnesota, which is weird. It's like, how are the Thunder and the T-Wolves <laughs> two of the best teams in the Western Conference? But here we are uh, as we get close to the playoffs now. Yeah, uh, especially like the Thunder. They, they're they kind of uh, the young guns that have kind of cut their teeth a little bit, and now they're starting to rise up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who would have thought? Like, I knew they had some good young talent. Say, Gilgis Alexander, who was a Clipper for a right. minute. You know, like, he's their big star scorer. But, yeah, who would have thought that they would have got this good this quickly? And Minnesota's got some young stars, too. So, they, I mean, both of them could be problems for years out, out in the West. So, we'll see. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think, in this, uh, this upcoming playoffs. I think so. All right. Patrick, it's a tradition unlike any other, right? It's the Masters. It's teeing off this morning at Augusta. Obviously, it's, I would say, the most prestigious major of the four, uh, and it's teeing off today. Tiger Woods is playing, and by wow. all accounts, Patrick, from other golfers, they're saying he's never looked this good. He actually looks the best he has in years, which kind of gets me excited because I want to see him playing on right. Sunday, and I want to see him within striking range on that for that top spot on the leaderboard. I want to as well, but I have to admit, it sure seems like they hype it up because <laughs> there is so much we want to see him so badly. And it just makes me wonder, it makes me a little suspicious if they're just using Tiger to get the hype and then all of a sudden, oh, my back, oh, my knee. I hate being negative Nelly, but I hope, just like you said, we do get to see Tiger because there's always that hope, man, because you never know what could happen. If anybody's going to pull off some magic, it is him. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I saw something on Twitter the other day, one of those random Twitter feeds, and they were asking men, guys, you know, if you had one wish, what would it be? And some were like, you know, to, to stop any wars in the world or cure a disease. And one guy was like, I just want to see Tiger win one more major. That would be amazing. So, I mean, a lot, everybody wants to see it. Like, can he do it? Can he make the... the you know, the ultimate comeback and do it one more time, especially not just some, you know, the waste management open, the, the masters, man, the green jacket, Augusta. So I don't know. I'm, I'm like you, I'm a little skeptical just by nature, but I want to believe that like, Oh man, he's in great shape. He's going to have a chance. Yes. And history does repeat itself. And you'll never forget when Jack Nicholas in the eighties at 46 years old did come back to do it. He is Jack-like. He's yeah. our Jack Nicholas of our generation. So there is that possibility out there. There is a possibility. There's a chance. That's what we're there's holding on to. I know there's bad weather today in Augusta. So we'll see what the, uh, the rest of the terms will be great weather. So we'll see how that kind of unfolds uh, there. And finally, Patrick, some uh, NFL news. We love football. And uh, the first NFL regular season game will be played in the country of Brazil, Eagles versus Patrick Packers on a Friday night, in fact, September 6th, Eagles and Pack in Brazil. Can you believe it, man? I mean, near the equator, that is <laughs> going to be so wild. I mean, just when you said it, it's like just hearing it is like, wow, talk about going global. But I mean, it sure seems like all these games on foreign soil seem to be very good for the game. And I think this one will be another one. These are huge cities. That they visit. I mean, remember, yeah. I remember the Raiders and the Patriots in Mexico City. It was huge. Yeah. All these soccer-loving places they go to, right? You know, in England, uh, Germany, Brazil, Mexico City. This this game in Brazil is going to be in Sao Paulo. Like, it, it's just funny. Like, there are all these soccer-hungry, crazy, you know, places. And we'll see if football will, you know, maybe catch on a little bit. Maybe there already are NFL fans down there. I have no idea. 
And I think there will be as you grow up. I mean, you know, when you're a young kid and you see this stuff, you never know what that's going to turn into. Pretty yeah. soon, just like we've seen, we're going to have an NFL player from Brazil. Yeah, it'll happen, right? It'll happen at some point. And it's, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make football a global game. I mean, soccer's the ultimate global game, but they're trying. the NFL's trying to do it. They're trying to branch out. Wow, so much going on. We will know so much more when we talk to our guy, Pep, on Monday. Pep, tell me how to get your stuff. Get my stuff anytime on Inland Sports, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We got the Inland Sports YouTube channel. If you're down with the Inland Empire, you're down with local sports, check it out. That's Inland Sports. Thanks, Pep.